Okay, so it's been a crazy uh, week and a bit. Um, my brother ended up in hospital. They thought he had a stroke, but it turned out to be vertigo. I uh, had a bunch of uh, allergies. So every time I sat down to try and uh, talk to you guys and make a video, my instruments got covered in snot and all of that crap. So I've just, uh, it's been a rough week for the Zupa tribe, but everyone is well now. And uh, finally, I get a chance to recap my exciting Marty Friedman encounter uh, a couple of nights ago. I finally got the chance to see my favorite guitarist of all time play and it was um, a very, very eye-opening and magical experience. Um, you have these expectations of um, what you're going to get out of a live show and it was very, very interesting because uh, Marty even said it himself, you know, I didn't know what the turnout was going to be like here. So it ended up being a pretty intimate kind of gig, sort of 200 people in my city of Melbourne. Um, one of my students was at a Brisbane show and there's only 50 people there. And I was like, oh my God, you know, one of my favorite guitarists in the world's coming down to tour and his niche is so small and his name is so niched as well that, you know, not only is he not playing stadiums, he's playing freaking shitty pub gigs and there's only 50 people there. So I felt kind of bad for the guy, but at least at our show, you know, it was completely packed and um, the crowd loved it. But uh, there was, I guess there's a couple of things that kind of came up for me. Um, the first one is, you know, I've played shows to as big crowds as, as what Marty did uh, on a local thing. And I think my, any band or project that I've been in, has always resonated more with people when there's a prominent or exciting or charismatic vocalist. And I think that's the thing that's kind of pulled me away from listening to more virtuosic, uh, you know, instrumental kind of music and sort of go more towards sort of a band setting like, you know, Alter Bridge or Metallica or Make It Earth, all of that kind of stuff um, because it resonates with guitarists Sorry, it resonates with music fans that aren't guitarists. So my wife was um, lovely enough to get me the tickets to go to see Marty, and she actually came with me. And there were some points where she was like, you know, that's pretty cool, and you know, that's you know, that's that was really cool what he did there. But at the same time, when there was those really, really crazy shred sequences and other stuff, you know, if you're not a guitarist, it's kind of a private joke uh, that only other guitarists are in on. So. That was kind of one thing that came up for me as well is that I can't see myself anytime soon going back to doing instrumental music because of um, how small the niche is. Not that I'm sort of that success driven, but there's something about playing to a crowd of people that, you know, love your singer, love what they're doing, saying, you know, the music and the lyrics and that kind of thing. Um, that was something that was missing from Marty Friedman's gig, if I could comment on anything. But other than that, I mean, it was one of the best gigs I've ever seen, don't get me wrong. So that was um, one of the things that came up uh, for me in that regard. And also just the absolute emotion in his playing and what he does. He's always coming in, bending outside to in. And he does so many of those moments and it's so expressive and you can see it in his face. And because we're only kind of 10 feet away from him it was a pretty intimate gig my wife my my wife trying to get that word out my wife was saying to me that you know when he's playing it's almost like he's playing a saxophone you see him go like he's kind of like breathing out the notes as he plays them and his whole body is kind of one with his instrument it's really expressing his melodies and you can hear it when he's playing you're like oh my god so affected um, by the notes he's playing I think that's probably why I got on my high horse probably too aggressively uh, in hindsight about all of this, you know, MIDI guitarist and faking and miming is because when you see music that genuinely moves you, um, why can't it, I guess, why can't it all be like that's a kind of a dumb sentence, but I think that's what people should be striving for and not this kind of let's see how many notes I can play per second and how close can I sound to play like a cyborg, but can I play melody and create music and feelings and vibes that move people? Uh, that was something I also really got out of it. Uh, so another thing that we got out of it, <laughs> Marty's standing at the front, he throws a pick of the audience and my wife just goes, if you want this, passes it over 
And then we get in the car and she's like, oh, by the way, here's another one. So she caught two of his pigs uh, because she is a magical, wonderful woman. And uh, another really, really good thing that came from that night is it's been so long since I've enjoyed music for what it is. I know that sounds like a dumb thing to say, but the majority of the time I sit in this room, I'm teaching guitar, I'm doing Skype lessons, I'm creating books, I'm creating video content, I'm transcribing something, I'm making a YouTube video. Most of the time when I have a guitar in my hand, it's to be productive, to make some money, to create revenue, to just do something that's for a reason. And to go out on a date with my wife and actually enjoy music as just something that I enjoy doing was really, really quite strange to me. I haven't done it in so long. And having my wife there as well, um, you get very, very used to just having a partner. Like, okay, we're married, we need to pay bills. How was your day? Oh, I had to study really hard and work with these clients. How was your day? I taught guitar for 11 hours. That's good. There's a bill coming up. Can we pay it? Yes, we can. You get into this kind of like robotic partnership. It doesn't mean the love isn't there. Um, you just can, I guess, to a degree, romantically take each other for, for granted. And when I was at this gig, you know, my wife was, you know, all done up and we we're both dressed cool and we went out to dinner beforehand and we we're laughing and she was talking to me about ever since she's met me, I've kept bringing up this Marty Friedman guy and she was really happy that she got to share that with me. And I was like, this chick's kind of cool, you know, like, let's see where this goes. I'm like, oh, you're not on a third date. You're actually married to her and you have a child. But um, it was a really, really important um, night for me to just sort of take a step back from being a professional working musician and a husband and father and just be like, hey, I'm going to take this babe out on a date and enjoy some music. So if that's something that sounds good to you and has been lacking from your life and marriage, like just... Just frickin' go for it, put some time aside, uh, spend some time together, enjoy music as a hobby, as something that you enjoy, as something that you're passionate about, and just you know spend some time together. If you're a working musician like me, that might sound like something uh, that resonates with you. Anyway, I'm babbling. It was lovely to see you guys all again. I uh, hope you have a rockin' Christmas and New Year's, and I'll have more content for you as soon as possible. Mwah. Bye-bye.